Steve and I met through Lisa Cherney's right. online GFR community. It's the Get Effing Real community. And yes, the F is a four letter word in that community. You can probably guess what it is. Steve lives in Asheville, North Carolina. After burning out in a corporate, in a career in corporate finance, Steve Garvin returned to his childhood love of story. Corporate finance, while providing an excellent foundation for being an entrepreneur, left him starving for self-expression, personal freedom, and, his, and the sense his work mattered. When Steve is not working, you'll find him hiking through the mountains of Western North Carolina, pondering what makes a great story, working on his weekend novel, drawing dragons, and spending time with his wife and four children. When Steve is at work, you'll find him helping coaches, authors, speakers, trainers, and healers deliver a richer story. And um, I'm really grateful for Steve being here today. Um, he's going through a, a very challenging family matter right now. And um, it would be very easy for him to have just said, hey, I won't do this, I'll cancel, and I would have been okay with that. Um, he's graciously um, still coming here. And, uh, you know, it'll be a little bit shorter talk than planned, but that is okay. Um, and uh, Steve is going to be just, you know, talking about beauty from ashes. So I'll let Steve uh, get started on that. All right. Well, thank you for having me here, Scott. I first heard about the idea of beauty among the ashes a couple of years ago roughly, after the massive forest fire went through Northern California. And in that forest fire, there were 153,000 acres that were burned and lots of houses and some lives were lost. And it was just a really trying time for many people, of the people who lived in the area. And the town that was most impacted by it was a town by the name of Paradise, California. Okay. Roughly, yeah, I've, been, I've been through there. Have you? Okay. Yeah. And it was like emaciated. It was just burned to the ground, ashes. And an artist named Shane Grammer, who was originally from that area and moved down to the Los Angeles area in order to work as a freelance artist for the movie studios and so forth, came back up and painted a handful of murals on the chimneys and other things that were left in that area. And he entitled his work, Beauty Among the Ashes. And I wish I had one of the paintings with me right now, but it's just this really gorgeous work that is hard to believe that he did with a spray can of spray paint. And the reason it struck me was that he created this beauty literally among the ashes. And sometimes that's the way mental health affects us is that it feels like the, and it, I don't think, I think it might be fitting, Scott, that you've got a forest image behind you right now, the mm. beauty of, of those trees and so forth. And, you know, imagine them just gone and just ashes left. You know, sometimes when mental illness rolls through our life, it can sometimes feel like that. Yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm grateful to have this behind me. It's a tapestry, and uh, I'll mm. just it it's covering up the beautiful oh, wow. cinder block wall. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so it's a wow. little it's a little pretty, and it's it's similar to the murals you mentioned, right? It's like after a massive fire like that, it would be very easy to focus on the ground and the environment that's been unfortunately dramatically changed and for artists to come together and add beauty to the walls that's that's amazing because it's there for anybody anytime and obviously they did it out of the goodness of their heart they weren't looking to get paid they weren't looking to get in on instagram and you know have a tv crew come and do it it was all from their hearts and from being kind kind people that care about others and care about the area to to bring, do what they can to bring beauty back to a ravished area. Absolutely. You know, and, and when I was feeling a little bit, well, literally burned out in corporate and then struggling with the depression and the honestly suicidal 
urges that I had at the time, I felt like, you know, that my life was like ashes, you know, and it's like, how do I, how do, what do I do with this? What's, you know, how do I recover? How do I rebuild? How do I, you know, bring back the life that I once had? And for that matter, how do I create an even more fulfilling life? And what I realized over time was, you know, I, I had two choices largely. And those two, two choices were I can either re accept what had happened and rebuild on it, you know, strive to bring beauty among the ashes of my life, or I could just dwell on the ashes and the, the darkness, the, the difficulty that was inherent and is such, you know, is oftentimes a part of the struggle that we have with, with mental health issues. You know, it can be really dark. But I, what I found is that, you know, it's possible to create something more beautiful, that even in those ashes, it's possible to create something that is hopeful, that, that there can be joy and beauty again in our lives. It's so true. Yeah. And once again, I just wanted to really, really thank you for coming here today. I know it's a uh, it's not been the easiest day for you today, and uh, you still made it here, which is very admirable, especially on a on a live call. And um, for everyone watching, whether it's live or later, I did post links for Steve. He's an amazing storyteller. He's got some incredible, an incredible Facebook group, and uh, you know, I'd encourage you to check him out. So once again, thank you so much for for coming today, Steve, despite everything happening literally just before this call and really appreciate it. And uh, I'm sending you a big virtual hug. And <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I look forward to connecting again with you. Thank you, Scott. My appreciate pleasure. all you're doing. Cool. Well, take care, Steve. And once again, uh, take care of you and uh, be well. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.